Charlie, you've often complained that accountants are <laughs> the root of much evil and also of even more folly. Um, you know, as we look at the current situation that we have in our financial markets, how much of the responsibility would you lay at the feet of the account professional? Well, here I'm a voice in the wilderness, but I would argue that a majority of the horrors we faced would not have happened if the accounting profession were organized properly. In other words, they have a position from which if they behaved intelligently and correctly, they could prevent a huge amount of all that's wrong with the system. And they fail utterly time after time after time. And they are way too liberal and providing the kind of accounting the financial promoters want. So in other words, they've sold out and they do not even realize that they've sold out, which of course is a common human psychological phenomenon. You, you, you squelch by denial. So what if, what, if you, what if you recognize would make you think ill of yourself or, or would interfere with your income? And so at a subconscious level, without any malevolence, the accounting profession are behaving in a way that makes, well, compared to what could reasonably be with intelligence and honor, the accounting profession is a sewer. And would you give an example? Could you give an example of a particular accounting principle or practice? Business Therapy summarized that the two companies engaged in a large derivative trade, and according to their calculations, they both made a huge profit. However, the value of the exchange began to swing significantly over time. Despite this, both companies continued to modify their valuations based on market conditions, and both continued to make money. Something was clearly wrong when the fluctuations became increasingly dramatic. One of the firms began to doubt the correctness of their valuations and began to look into the subject more thoroughly. They soon discovered that the other firm was calculating the value of the trade using a different methodology that was not in accordance with the standard principles of mark-to-market accounting. The first firm was stunned and outraged. They had always taken pleasure in their strict adherence to the rules and the fact that the other corporation was openly flouting them was unacceptable. When they brought their concerns to the notice of the authorities, they were met with an unexpected response. You think they take derivative trading with mark-to-market accounting, which degenerates into mark-to-model. Two firms make a big derivative trade. The finance industry's existing thinking and customs had permitted horrible errors to occur, and no one was ready to do anything about it. The second firm continued to utilize their own system, and their earnings skyrocketed, while the first battled to stay up using regular mark-to-market accounting. As time passed, more and more businesses adopted the same strategy, and mark-to-market accounting devolved into mark-to-model accounting. As valuations were increasingly focused on theoretical models rather than actual market realities, the banking industry became increasingly removed from reality. In the end, the consequences of this blunder were disastrous. The finance industry was thrown into disarray as trade values became increasingly disconnected from reality, and the global economy suffered as a result. Despite the obvious warning signs, nobody appeared concerned that this was happening. And the accountants on both sides show a large profit right. from they, the same trade. And they can't both be right. And they can't both be right. And both of them are following the rules to the T. Yes, and nobody's even bothered by the fact that it's happening. Right. It violates the the most elemental principles of common sense. And the reason they do it is there's a demand for it from the financial promoters. I remember when interest rate swap accounting was done on a different and more conservative basis. And the Morgan Bank was the last holdout. And finally, they couldn't hold their traders and report the same kind of income other people reported and so they threw out the sound accounting and went to the phony accounting uh, and they they did it was kind of funny at the time it was many decades ago 
And I said, some of the people were kind of reluctant, but they said, we just have to go, go with the flow. So it was a huge mistake. Is this a problem that can be fixed with the accounting profession, with the accounting process, or is this something that we're just going to have oh, to I think you're with? talking about a problem rooted so deeply in human nature that uh, I don't think you'll live long enough to see it. If it gets 20% fixed in the direction it should go, in your remaining lifetime, you'll be a fortunate man. So how do we get there? So let's assume that we actually want to accomplish something good in this space. to transform all human life into a... <laughs> We're just talking about the anyway, account. Anyway, yeah, Charlie. Well, but accounting is a big subject, and, and there are huge forces in play, and, and the entire momentum of existing thinking and existing cu custom is in a direction which allows these terrible follies to happen. And the terrible follies have terrible consequences. What we're in now is in its triggering circumstances. It's worse than anything that's ever happened. It's worse than the Great Depression. Yeah, it's not, no, we're not, the economy hasn't contracted as much as the Great Depression, mm -hmm. but the Malfeasance and silliness it was the triggering event, was way greater. So, so in other words, more widespread. In the 20s, a tiny little class of people were our financial promoters, and a tiny little class of people were the people that bought securities. This now is deep into the whole culture, and it was way more extreme. So, if sin and folly get punished, we're in for a hell of a punishment. So it's it's a more pervasive problem, and it's also a more global problem. Yes. And do you see a chance that it does reach to a level uh, closer to the Great Depression? How bad does this get, Charlie? Well, nobody knows that because we've never done this before. Uh, it's We have a bigger credit bubble. We have worse follies. We have a more in interconnected global system. If we responded to this one the way people responded to the 30s, in my judgment, it would be way worse. I mean, we would have a catastrophe. And that, you can argue, gave us Hitler in World War II and a lot of things that we didn't need. I mean, it was not... It, getting your... Financial integrity and the integrity of your accounting right has enormous implications for the future of mankind, and and, we, and yet very few people realize how much we screwed up. Very few people realize, even at leading law school and schools and business schools, how Enron never could have happened if they hadn't changed the accounting rules. accounting rules and. And what we have now is just a bigger, widespread Enron. You know, I like, I like telling my students that no civilization is greater than its plumbing, and accounting is really the plumbing of the financial system. And to the extent that, that the, the plumbing can't serve the function, the whole, the, 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 the whole edifice, really, um, in many situations, uh, is not going to work the way that it's intended idiot bubbles blessed, blessed by accountants are terrible for legal civilization. It would be much better if we didn't have these idiot bubbles, or at least if they were dampened very considerably. But people use the idiom. Nobody wants to take the punch bowl away when everybody's having a good time at the party. But that's the accountant's job, and that's the central banker's job, and you're never popular well, doing that. It's the business's job, and the people who do it tend to be despised and hated, and you know, not a lot of people are willing to be despised and hated, ruin their fellow creatures, parties, et cetera, et cetera. The main thing you have to realize is Ben Franklin's basic idea that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. 
that's understated. An ounce of provision is sometimes worth a ton of cure. Mm -hmm. And your only real chance was not to allow it to happen.